Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number 24 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is productivity. Our quote of the day comes to us from Walt Disney. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. This episode of the No Quit Living Podcast is brought to you by the I3 Initiative. In today's society, it is so easy to get caught up in the drama, negativity, and uncertainty in the universe we are a part of. Against those challenges, we are committed to make the world a better place through improvement, impact, and integrity. You are invited to join our mission and learn more about our book club, membership, live events, and mastermind at i3initiative.com. That's the letter I, the number three, initiative.com. I'm very eager to bring you today's episode. Our guest is quite an impressive woman of many talents. As an inspirational speaker, radio personality, strategic business coach, and best-selling author, she does it all. Her positive approach towards both life and productivity is very inspiring. With that being said, it is my honor to introduce today's guest, Penny Zanker. Penny, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Hey, it's great to be here, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. So the number one objective of our podcast is to both inspire and motivate our listeners to never give up on themselves or their dreams. I wanted to ask if you could share perhaps a personal story about perseverance or maybe a challenging time that tested you, but you kept on going and never quit. Which one? <laughs> right? I, I think one of the, um, the ones that I remember the most was when I started my technology company back in, in 96 and, um, you know, it was, it was kind of bootstrap type of, of a business where, you know, there were a couple of us and we were doing consulting. We were really looking to, to, to break through with the projects that we were doing and really get some bigger projects. But, you know, the, the challenge when you're growing as an entrepreneur is as the cash comes in, it's already spent. (laughs) And so cash flow was a huge, huge issue at times, like, you know, where I was, concerned about my staff and whether we'd be able to pay them, you know, month to month. And I know that a lot of people who are entrepreneurs can appreciate that. You know, I wouldn't pay myself and I was worried, you know, you hear people's stories about uh, what's going on with their kids or, you know, they're they're taking care of their mother and and you feel like responsible for, for these people. So that was probably the hardest time was, was working through those cash flow issues and, you know, it was through perseverance of knowing that we were going to we were going to get that 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 big project that was going to make all the difference for us. And and really, I think we went through this for about a year through that, you know, not sure what was going to happen. And then and then it happened. We got we got our breakthrough project that changed everything for us, that made things a lot more comfortable uh, on a cash flow perspective And it wouldn't have happened had we not persevered. That's why a lot of companies, they go out of business or they they give up, they lose spirit. And uh, and that's that's, you know, what we were able to help each other to maintain and and work through that time and and really persevere to when we could then, you know, what ended up happening with the company is we built it up to a multimillion dollar business and we sold it to a public company in Europe. That's quite a story. And I think a lot of people don't realize the trials and tribulations of being an entrepreneur. And I wonder if there is a way you could track how many companies were actually stopped right before the breaking point. And obviously, the cash flow component in your business is a challenge for everybody is making sure you can pay all the bills. And as you mentioned, with a lot of entrepreneurial individuals and startup companies, the money is spent before it comes in. So it's not only a challenge of, of sticking to it, but it's a challenge of committing and being loyal to your to your employees, and I, I commend you for doing that. And being open and honest, right? That's that's something that's important too. Is everybody was appreciative that they always knew what the situation was, and I, I think that sometimes people want to hide it from from their staff because they want them to. Um, a, I agree, you want them to feel secure, but at the same time, you want them to have a certain level of of transparency so that um, so that they're working with you to make it happen. 
No, that's true, and I think the transparency component is is very very important, especially with a with a startup company. I think. Unfortunately, a lot of those companies or businesses that don't make it, the transparency is probably not there. And, and if and when it does come about, it's probably usually too late. Yeah. As a best-selling author, and since many of our listeners are into personal development and looking to improve different areas of their life, I was interested if you have a favorite book that had a significant impact on you, or perhaps you've read something recently that you'd like to recommend to our listeners. Um, I think the book that that stands out that I, I've, I've read now a couple of times and I just, I just, uh, I just love it. Uh, it's called the upside of stress by Kelly McGonigal. And it, it is a refreshing look at really understanding what, what stress is about and understanding that, that the fact is we choose to be stressed. And I'm not saying that I'm never stressed, <laughs> but I realize that there's a dynamic there that we have more control over than we think. I'm never stressed, so I don't know what you're talking about. Everything is absolutely yeah. perfect. That's interesting. I wanted to ask if you wouldn't mind expanding on that for a minute as far as the stress component, because I do think certain things bring stress and certain parts of life are stressful. But I think to your comment, we can all handle stress differently. And I think that's maybe a part of the book that if, I wonder if you could just expand on for a minute. Yeah, well, there's a couple of a, a couple of really good segments of, of points that uh, Kelly McGonigal makes. Um, one of them is that, you know, we, we get stressed over conditions in our life. You know, we feel like we don't have enough time. Um, and that's the thing that I hear a lot, you know, as I write a lot and talk a lot about productivity and, you know, there was a, she quotes a lot of really great studies. So one in particular, for instance, is at University of Pennsylvania, they were testing people's level of stress and putting them through, you know, two groups separated. One group, they gave more, um, I'm sorry, one group they gave, they took, they, they gave them back some of their time. So they took some of the responsibilities away. So they technically had like two more weeks, uh, two more uh, hours of time a week. And the other group, what they did was they actually gave them two hours of community service. So in a way they took away time and, you know, throughout the whole process, they measured their cortisol levels and, and put them through various different surveys and were monitoring them along the way. And so the results came out very differently than what people expected. So the people who, and I'm using this as an example because this is the way she brings about the points in, in the book, which is really great, is people who were given back their time, would you think that their stress levels would be um, higher, lower, or the same? Probably lower. You'd think they would be lower, but they weren't. They were actually the same. There was no change in the level of stress that they had, and they also... So that means also the levels of cortisol and also how they felt about not having enough time. So the people who had community service, where would you think their stress levels would be? Higher, but it's probably actually lower. Right. Right. It's the, it's, it's the paradox there. And it, it is a great situation to explain that really, um, you know, what what we think creates stress. It's really it's it's the situation, the people who were contributing they felt better about themselves in general, and therefore that's why their stress went down. <clears throat> so she's talking about in the book how, you know, there are ways that we can take a look at if we believe that stress is bad for us, then it will be. But if we believe that stress is in a way good for us, and meaning that we can control it, we can manage it, and we can decide that that's not going to be stressful for us, then we we look at it in a different way, right? We we will determine what that experience is based on what what we think that means to us. Well, that's interesting. And and jumping over to what you mentioned about some of the things you talk about productivity in your book, The Productivity Zone, which I would definitely mm -hmm. recommend to our listeners. I was curious, how did you become an expert in the productivity field? Well, you know, sometimes we teach what we need to learn ourselves, <laughs> right? So, and, and I, I think it was, you know, it, it really, and I, I think it was, I was in search of understanding, I've always wanted to make things better and be more efficient and more effective at things. So 
you know, that's actually, you know, I mentioned that I had a technology company. That's why I love technology is because it was a great tool to help us, you know, in various different areas of our life to create greater efficiencies or also to create more value. And so I used that as a tool. And then, you know, later I realized also that, you know, we have various different tools available to us, but we don't always use them, right? So a lot of times we know what to do, but we don't actually do what we know. And so it's not enough just to have the resources in order to be productive. We also have to have the other side of it, which is being resourceful. It's interesting. We talk about that with no quit living and dealing with millennials and resourceful versus resources. And, and it's oh, good. interesting dynamic as, as far as you can have the resources and you can have the resources quicker and, and you can get them much faster than many years ago. But the question is, what do you do with that information once you have it? Right, right. So it's, it's understanding how to get the balance of both, you know, the, the resourcefulness, which is really coming from our psychology and that's affecting you know, getting back to the stress element is what we do with that. And then on the other side, it's it's the tools and, and other resources like money and time and so forth that we have. We use a daily quote in each of our podcasts. And I was curious if you have a favorite quote. Um, I think one of the quotes that I recently used in it, and I was recently in a TED Talk uh, at Penn State. And it's it's really, you know, Einstein talks about uh, that we can't solve the problem with the same level of thinking that created it. And I, I love that quote because it gets us, you know, out of ourselves to when we have a challenge of, of some sort to to stop thinking the way that we were thinking that created the problem and think outside the box. Think, think in a different way. Look in a different part of the box. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a great quote, and I'll definitely put that in the show notes. As we all know, life is definitely very challenging in many ways. And I was curious, what motivates and drives you to keep going every single day? You know, I mean, obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, I have children and my my children are a big driver for me, you know, just and and it's not just seeing them grow, but it's it's a driver of, of me being the example and creating something of value in the world and showing them and and watching them as they develop to be able to do the same. So, and it, I I think also it it motivates me. Like I love, I get so teared up and so emotional when I see people who overcome challenges, when they persevere through something, you know, that the human spirit is, is what excites me and gets me to wake up in the morning. And I love to excite the human spirit in others. That is awesome. That is our our big driving force as well with, with our podcast and with our with our company, No Quit Living, is to inspire and motivate people to never give up. So I could not agree more with that. In regards to your morning or a daily ritual, I was curious: is there something that you do every day or every morning that could attribute that you can attribute your both personal as well as your professional success to? Well, I think I'd like to twist that because so many t- people talk about what they do in the morning, and I'll I'll maybe make a comment on that. But I want to say what I don't do in the morning which is more important in my focus is I do not watch the news in any way or listen to the news or check the news because I don't want to fill myself with negativity in the morning. So I start with gratitude and I write in my gratitude journal. The other things that I don't do is I do not check email. I try to wait as long as possible in the morning to check email so that I can do the things that are most important to me first because when we check email, we tend to be reactive from that point forward. Like we're putting ourselves in a reactive mindset. So, you know, so those are some of the things that I don't do. So I, I really do try to, you know, I have a list from the night before of what are the top things that I want to accomplish the next day. What's the, the key, key priority. And I do something first thing in the morning to move that key priority forward. I think that's very interesting you touch upon that in regards to you're the first person that turn the question around. So I give you kudos for that. But it's important that, as you mentioned, as you put a positive spin on your day and by doing what you do, in essence, not doing it, you control your day. And and I have to just tell one very brief story. Zig Ziglar, who's 
who was a mentor of mine for many years. Mm -hmm. I had his son, Tom, on the show. And one of the things that Zig said many, many years ago is he said the first thing he does every morning is he reads the Bible and he watches the news so he knows what both sides are doing. And it was a, hu <laughs> it was a humorous comment. But that's the one thing that I think, unfortunately, in today's day and age is there's a lot of negativity going throughout the media mm. as well as social media. And if you turn that on, you're putting that in your mind, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, you're putting what's out there. And I think you mentioned also by right, not checking email. I think so many people have that shiny object syndrome where as soon as you wake totally. up, it's, I got I to gotta check my email or I got to turn on my iPad or I got to check, check my laptop. And I think what then, as you mentioned, is you are being reactive as opposed to proactive. So I, I commend you for what you do do in the morning. And I think that's a great, a great way that you spun the question around. So you're the first person that has done that on all the podcasts. Awesome. So who has had the greatest influence in your life? Well, other than my parents, and my parents had a big influence on my life and teaching me, you know, just some of the, the critical basics, you know, the, you know, the do unto others, uh, you know, as, as you'd, uh, as you want them to do unto you type of thing. I mean, obviously in, in different ways and different lessons, but I feel that my parents really gave me wonderful lessons of, of integrity and, and just, um, being a good person. You know, like I remember, uh, back when I was in high school, the lesson that really helped me, I, I, you know, I don't enjoy when other people talk about other people. Like I don't like judgment like that. It, bothers me when I, when I hear people judging each other and it's be back from high school when my mother said, you know, if, if you, if a friend is talking to you about another girl, then she's probably talking to that other girl about you. And so I always kept that in my mind about, you know, how I behave and that I don't need to say something. If I have something to say to somebody, I'll clear it directly with them. I'll say it directly to them. So you know, so my parents gave me some great wisdom. And I had it also just to stick in there. I had an excellent mentor uh, when I was maybe I was 26 was the first like real outside mentor outside of the home. And um, he was my boss and he taught me what it was to be a great leader. That's that's awesome. You sounds like you have three very good mentors in your life. And I think the fact that at 26, you had a boss that was able to teach you what a great leader is. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people probably don't have that today. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a shame. Um, because they're, you know, you can you can also be led by a lot of these great authors that are writing these amazing books and sharing their experiences. You know, it doesn't have to be somebody that you know, or that you physically interact with. No, it's interesting. And Bob Berg, who was our number one guest on our podcast, said something that I've probably mentioned about 100 times, is <laughs> that we might have what, what he coined as drive-by mentors. And what he meant by that was that people that might only be in our life for a short period of time, but mm -hmm. they could have a very significant impact. And then you bring up a very significant point is that you can have a mentor that you might not personally know, whether it's following that person on social media or reading their books or their audio programs, or even maybe attending conferences. So I think the, the good part out there is with all the technology today is you don't need to have a mentor that's physically in front of you where you meet with them in person, you might be able to have many mentors in all different areas of your life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, a, a book mentor for me for many years was Tony Robbins. Like I watched his programs and, and because of that, that drove me to going to his events and then becoming a coach and working actually, you know, having meeting him and, you know, taking it to a whole different level. So, you know, it's, it's really important to feed your mind with, with these, great, inspiring leaders that are available to us. I could not I could not agree more with that. If you could go back in time and give the 20-year-old Penny one piece of advice, <laughs> what would it be? Ooh, what would that be? One piece of advice. That is interesting. Uh, what would I tell my younger self? I think I would tell my younger self to lighten up, that to have more fun, and to play it, you know, play the game of life like it's a game. You know, I, I feel like I did take a lot of risks. Um, but at the same time, I feel like over the years, um, some of that lightness got lost. Some of that playfulness got lost. I'm, I'm sort of bringing it back now. <laughs> um, so I, I think I would just say that is just just have fun with it that, you know, 
everything is, and I don't, I don't think I felt this way when I was 20, but that everything is happening the way that it's supposed to. It's all, whatever the experience is, there's something to learn from it. And so just accept it and embrace it because everything else just creates stress. <laughs> no, I think that was, that's very good advice. And, and I wish I could go back to my 20s and give certain advice. But I think, as you mentioned, things happen for a reason. And, and if you enjoy it and realize that if you if you stress about it, it's not going to make it any better or worse. That's right. So why not enjoy the moment and, and go after it? So I wanted to ask you if there's anything that you're working on or anything coming out that you'd like to share with our listeners. Yeah, I'm really excited about a new goal that I've set. <clears throat> I've been, um, God, I've been working on this project for many years. So it started out where I was trying to figure out what were the main factors of success that really made people productive, that made them efficient and effective. Remember, we, we talked about before about like, you know, part resources, part resourcefulness. So I came up with this um, productivity assessment. And over the years, it morphed from 20 down to 10 core factors as I interviewed people and I used it with my clients and I used it with myself. And it's kind of like an assessment and, a, and, and it's an ongoing assessment. So it's not something you take once and then gain some insight and then you don't really look at it or use it anymore. It's, it's designed so that you could take it on a daily or weekly basis to kind of take a step back and get perspective, a holistic look at how you're approaching your day or your projects, your goals. And, um, and so now it's ready for the masses. And so I'm super excited because I set a goal that now that the development is finished and all the initial testing is done and we've had some initial great feedback, uh, that we're now rolling it out worldwide and we're looking to get a million people on the platform in the next three years. So I'm super excited about that. And where can our listeners find that or where can they, where can you direct them to? Uh, the best uh, site to go to, I created like a, a little bit.ly link, which will make it easier for people to, to find. And uh, they can go to either my website, which is p10, www.p10app.com. And that's 10 is in the number 10. Uh, or they can go to the, the bit.ly link. So it's bit.ly slash p10 a-S-S-E-S-S. -S -S. That gives just that particular product and what it's all about. Perfect. So we will have that again in the show notes so our listeners can take advantage of that. Here's a different question for you. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Hmm. It's an interesting one. I would choose to be with uh, Elon Musk just because he has such a brilliant mind, the way that he thinks. And also, you know, he's like hundreds of steps ahead of everybody else in his thinking and where and what he wants to contribute and what he's what he's creating the technology that he's utilizing and uh and 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 creating is is incredible so i would just like to pick his brain to to see what's uh yeah just ask him a number of different questions you might need to be careful picking his brain because that could lead to a lot of different things and and maybe could lead to your <laughs> billion dollar idea it could, right? I mean, that's that's the cool thing is when you get together with people who think differently than you, that's where a lot of sparks can fly and ideas can can come up and it brings out different parts of you. No, I could not agree more with that is is that's why mastermind groups are so successful because you have like-minded people, but they all think differently, come from different fields and when you put them all together, that's where some of I feel the best ideas or suggestions come about. Absolutely. Before we let you go, I wanted to ask if you had any parting words for our listeners. Well, one of the things that, you know, I would leave people with, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, oh, I wish I had more time. You know, that's the main reason why I'm not more productive. And if I could only clone myself and, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. The, the thing is, is that we, you know, when we say we don't have the time, it's, it's really just an excuse you know, as we said, it's it's about thinking differently. Like like that quote that I brought up from Einstein that we can't resolve the problem with the same level of thinking. It's because that's what we're constantly doing is trying to use our same level of thinking. So we have to get more creative and we have to give ourselves time and space to be creative. And that's the challenge today is everybody is, you know, 
every single second is packed into doing something. And so my parting words would be to give yourself space to plan it in your calendar. If that feels uncomfortable because you have to plan it, so what? You make it happen, right? I mean, couples stay together because they plan a date night because otherwise it wouldn't happen, right? So plan yourself time to be able to think outside the box, to be able to explore what's going on in a different industry that might spark ideas for you in your industry. Just give yourself that space to be creative. I like that. Give yourself space to be creative. And last question, and I promise it's the easiest one. What is the best way for our listeners to connect or follow you? Uh, well, they can reach me on Facebook. at uh, I have a, a sort of a, a public page, and it's a Penny Z Perspective. And uh, so on Facebook, you know, I do a lot of posts and, and have a lot of things that are going on there. Uh, I also write a blog on a site called tugofwarwithtime.com. So they can check out the latest blogs that are going on there. And uh, they can also uh, email me at uh, penny at p10app.com if they you know, have any questions or, or want to hear more about what's going on. Well, listen, Penny, I can't thank you enough for your time as well as your insight. You shared some great stuff. And hopefully our listeners will check out your book as well as some of your links and connect with you on Facebook or perhaps even email you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. To sum up today's episode in our theme of the day, productivity, Penny shared some great advice. Whether it was her technology company or the current project she is working on, Penny discussed how she always wants to be better and more efficient. In her closing remarks, she shared something that I thought was spot on. She mentioned how when people say that they don't have enough time, all that is is just an excuse. She suggested for us to make time and to give yourself space to plan and put it in your calendar. I felt the most valuable part of today's interview was when Penny shared her morning ritual in the sense of what she does not do each morning. She was very clear that she doesn't watch the news on purpose as she wants to control and limit the negativity that goes into her mind. Instead, she utilizes a gratitude journal. The last thing she mentioned was that she does not open her email first thing in the morning. And the reason being is that she doesn't want to be put in a reactive mode and instead she chooses to be proactive with her morning and put a positive spin on how she starts her day. So the question for you is how do you begin your day? Do you run to pick up your phone, your iPad, or your tablet when you immediately wake up? Or do you begin your day on your own terms? I challenge you today to think about how you start your day and to be proactive with your feelings and your decisions as opposed to being reactive following someone else's direction. Begin today on your own terms and go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.